Hi everyone, I'm Richard. And I'm Joey. And we're devs on the Make Code team. Um, and today we wanted to make a video about uh, tile maps and levels. So levels are a thing we get a lot of questions about in Arcade. Mm -hmm. um, we get a lot of questions on the forums. So we thought we'd make this little video to show just a quick game with levels um, that will demonstrate some of the concepts that you can use to make levels in your game. Mm -hmm. um, along the way, we're also going to be doing tile maps. And um, I've already created a game here, and we'll just go through the process of making it. Sound good? Yep. Um, and so here's the game that I've created um, before, and I'm going to walk you through it real quick. So, Joey, do you want to read the messages as I go? Yes, I'll be the narrator. All right. So, where am I? I can't remember. I'm climbing for a reason. But what was it? To find something? To find someone? I can't help but wonder. Where am I? I can't remember. <laughs> I'm just gonna go forever and the game now. just keeps going. So um, I have made a game here with infinite levels. It just loops back in on itself. Um, and it's got a fun little narrative thing going on. But um, yeah, so I made this game in about 10 minutes. Um, so let's go ahead and try and make it in less than that time now. All right, so let's start by talking about tile maps. Um, Joey, do you know what a tile map is? Yeah, it's a place where you can put all of our tiles on the screen, right? Yep. So. Um, we uh, have a concept of tiles that are used pretty often in video games, and these are kind of repeated images that you can use to make the world of your game. Um, and so we have a few APIs for uh, making those, and they appear in the scene category. So real quick, I'm going to drag out two blocks, and they're the two most important blocks when you have set when you have tile maps. The first one is going to be set tile, and then the second one is going to be set tile map two. Now, you may notice this looks a lot like an image block. That's because it is actually an image. Um, like I said, uh, tiles are just images. In this case, because we're just going to be staying in blocks, they're going to be 16 pixels by 16 pixels. Um, and we have a bunch of those already in the gallery. So just for demonstration purposes, let's go ahead and choose one. Um, anything calling out to you? I mean, the chest is a pretty nice sprite. Yeah, all right, let's do the chest. OK, so now that I've got my chest here, um, you'll notice that immediately all of our um, uh, screen filled up with chests. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because the way that tile maps work is um, we have this map here, which is an image. Um, and we have assigned this tile image to this color. So this color right here is transparency. I'm going to go ahead and change it to something else. So now we should see those chests disappear. Mm -hmm. So if I want to add some chests into my world, I'm going to open up my tile map. And I've assigned the chest to be a white color. So if I go through now, wherever I put a white pixel, when this code runs, it's now going to place a chest in my game. Mm -hmm. So there's one other thing that we want to demonstrate real quick, and that's that some of these tiles can be things you walk through, and some of them are walls, so things that stop sprites from moving into them. Um, so I'm going to duplicate this block real quick, and we'll create a second tile. Um, you want to do open chest? Sure. And this one's going to be a wall. And because we've already signed this one to the white color, Let's go ahead and change this one to a different color. We'll do pink. All right. So let's go ahead and add some of that other tile to my world. Um, and now you can see we've got these uh, walls showing up. Um, and they look exactly the same as the other one. Different image, of course. But um, they actually have some behavior going on underneath. So if I create a hero sprite real quick, I'm just going to create a, uh, let's go ahead and do pizza. OK. Um, and I'm going to bring in a move block. So yep, just the one we always use. Um, and now I can move it by pressing the WASD keys on my keyboard. And you can see that the um, pizza has no trouble moving through the closed chest because we set that to wall off. But if I try to move through the open one, it gets stuck. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of how we're going to define um, the little levels that we saw before in my um, other game. All right. So we have 16 different colors, and I've gone ahead and assigned them to all of these 16 different tiles that we're going to use in the game. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, most of these, as you can see, are walls. Um, and we actually have two special ones that I'm just going to call out real quick. So in the game that I showed before, um, there was a doorway and a uh, stairway. And that's going to be our entrance and our exit for each of the levels. That makes sense. Um, the other things that I've got here are, um, because I've already shown a little bit about how to draw tile maps, I've drawn all of my levels here. I'm not going to go through that, but if um, 
you open them up, you can see these are all of the different tiles that I've mapped to different colors, and I've used all 16 colors throughout these tiles. Um, and I've also got my script here. Um, and this script is going to show those messages that we have on each of the start and end of uh, each level. Nice. The ones that I narrated? Yes, the ones that you beautifully read. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and get into the programming the actual game. Um, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is create some variables. I've already got two variables here. Um, they're both arrays. So this one is messages, and this one is levels. Um, but we need to keep track of where we are in the game, what level we're on. Yeah. Yep. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a variable. And what's a good name for this? Current level. Yeah, current level is great. So it's always good to make your variables descriptive so that you can remember what your code is doing when you come back to it. Mm -hmm. Um, so we want to start at the bottom, and because in computer science we don't start with one, we can start with zero. I'm going to set the current level to zero. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got these tile maps and we've got these tiles, but we don't have any code to actually bring the tile map into the game yet. Mm -hmm. So we need to call that set tile map block, but um, because we have multiple levels, we're actually going to be calling it a few times. So I'm going to go and create a function for this. Mm -hmm. Good name. Right. Next level. Sure. And so when we have a function, that's something that's going to make it so we can run the same code multiple times, right? Yep. So it's a good way of organizing your code so that if you have something that's going to be happening multiple times in your program, you don't have to write that code all over again. Mm -hmm. um, so um, in this case, what we want to do is we're going to call, and like I said, we're going to bring out that set tile map block. And um, because our levels are in this array here, um, we're going to go into the arrays category, and we're going to bring out a get value. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to change this variable to levels. So we've added the set tile map block, but nothing is happening yet. Any guesses? Mm -hmm. Have you actually used that function yet? Yeah, there's two parts of a function. There's the definition, and then there's the call. Um, and so uh, let's go ahead and at the bottom of our on start, we'll call next level. So this will actually start our game. Okay. So here you go. This was the entrance level for our game, and um, it's uh, already populated. Uh, this game is uh, not very exciting, though, now, uh, if I do say so myself. Is it really a game yet? Yeah, it's just a good a point. Image. It's really just kind of an image. Um, so let's go ahead and add our player character to the game. Um, use our favorite variable name, hero. Um, and we'll go ahead and create a sprite for the hero. Now, we have a lot of choices to uh, um, choose for our hero. Um, we could go with the boring knight, but I am much more fond of the cat. So mm -hmm. we're going to be doing the cat for this one. Cat is very pretty. I wrote the script with cat in mind. OK. Um, we can go ahead and leave the kind as player, because we're not actually going to have any other sprite kinds in this, in this program. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be the player. So our hero is not moving right now. So um, as we do in many of our other games, we're going to drag out another one of these move controller blocks. And we're going to change it to hero. You saw I had an error there for a second. That's because um, I was using the my sprite. I just had to change that drop down to hero. Mm -hmm. So now when I move around, um, everything seems to be working. Mm -hmm. Can um, you run into the walls? Yep. So I can't get into the walls. I can go into the door. Ooh. Um, and then I can't go into the stairs either. And the reason for that will become apparent in a bit. So um, now we've got our hero, um, but our hero is just kind of starting in the middle of the screen, which is not what we want. So um, we're always going to have to place the hero at the entrance at the beginning of each level. So because we have our little next level function up here, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and make a quick change to make it so that our sprite is going to be starting on the um, square in front of the doorway. Square in front of the doorway, yes. So if we look at where I've assigned the um, blocks to, the doorway um, is assigned to the black color. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a very useful block inside of the scene category, which is the place my sprite on top of random blank tile. So again, I'm going to change this to hero. And because the entrance is uh, black, we're going to change it to the black color. So now our uh, cat is starting out in the doorway. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, that looks a little weird, though. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to nudge the cat one tile over. Okay. Um, I have carefully written these tile maps so that that tile is always not occupied. Yeah, that makes sense. It would be kind of bad to start in a wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, generally, players don't like it when you can't move. Yes. So um, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Um, the X controls the horizontal position of the sprite. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and change the X by 16. OK. And um, what's the meaning of the 16 there? Ah, so our tile map, um, all of the tiles in our map are 16 pixels by 16 pixels. Mm -hmm. So if we move it forward by 16, that'll move it forward one tile length. OK, that makes sense. Yep. And as you can see now, we've got our cat starting out on the right tile. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're actually moving around, but there's no way for the cat to go up right now. Hitting these stairs does nothing. In fact, we can't even go into them. Yeah. So we've got our nice little um, level, current level uh, variable. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we um, increment that whenever we hit the stairs. OK. So we've assigned the stairs to the brown color. And inside of the uh, scene category, there is a on sprite of kind player hits wall blank. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that if you're going to be using this block, you want to make sure that the tile that you're trying to hit is a wall. So we've changed the uh, stairway to have wall turned on. Okay. Yep. Um, so uh, the stairway is color brown. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that here. And when the sprite of kind player hits the wall, we want to take our level variable. And we want to change it by one. Again, got to remember to change that variable name. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, if I run over and hit the stairway, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I know what it is. Um, we forgot to use our current level variable. I think we forgot something else, too, Ooh. to actually call the function. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, so functions don't work unless you call them. That's why we do this in pairs, folks. Mm -hmm. Um, and let's go into the functions category real quick. We're going to call next level after we change the current level. Mm -hmm. um, but one other thing we're also going to have to do is right now we're always getting the first level. Again, arrays in computer science start at zero, not one. So this is always getting the first thing in the levels array. Mm -hmm. um, so we made that current level variable, and I'm going to drag that into our get value at real quick. So now we move forward. See, I hit the stairs. Mm -hmm. We moved up a level. Nice. Keep going. And so what's going to happen when you get to the last level? That's a good question. Let's see. This is the last level. And I'm going to hit the stairs now. And oh, the tile map disappeared. Huh. So um, the reason that happened was because we reached the end of the array. Um, so again, I wrote this game to be a looping sequence of levels. Um, in your game, if you're making levels, this might be game over. You might tell the player they won or they lost because they reached the end. Um, in this case, though, um, we're just going to be annoying, and we're going to set the uh, current level back to zero. So uh, we want to do that right where we're changing the current level. And what should this conditional be? So it sounds like we want to make it so if we've run out of levels, then we reset it. Yep. So we're going to need a comparison block. OK. Um, and how do we know when we've run out of levels? Uh, well, we can get the length of the array, right? Yep. The length of the number the number of levels there are in the array. Yep, that's exactly right. So um, let's change this to our levels. And right now we have, if the current level is less than the length of the array, then do this. That's actually wrong. We want to flip this. Mm -hmm. So I, I think instead of less than, we actually want to do greater than or equal to. Um, yes. Because again, since it starts at 0, um, the last, the length of the array is actually not a valid index. That's mm -hmm. where we want to go back to zero. Yeah. The length of the valid array, the, the length of the array is the next empty spot in the array. Yep. All right. So in that case, we want to go back to the beginning. So we'll go ahead and set the current level to zero. Yeah. And we will test that out real quick. And back to the beginning. All right, so we pretty much have a functioning game at this point, but we also have the script. Um, and the reason we're putting in this here is to just give us a little bit of narrative, make mm -hmm. it a bit more interesting than just kind of running through endless hallways. So um, the way that we're going to actually display this message is using an API called uh, Sprite Say. 
So the save block um, makes it so that a message appears above a sprite. So just to show that off real quick, I'm going to put this at the beginning of my game, and I'm going to make the hero say something. Okay. Hero is going to be saying smiley face. So um, you can see this little smiley face thing appears above my cat hero. Um, we want this message to be static. It's going to be at the top of the screen. Mm -hmm. um, so to do that, we're going to cheat a little bit, and we're going to create a sprite. Mm -hmm. So what's a good name for this guy? Um, we're not actually going to set an image to it. It's just going to be the uh, message. Sprite. So yeah. maybe invisible? Sure. We'll go ahead and... Oh. <laughs> we'll go ahead and do a, a new variable, and we're going to call it invisible. Uh, oh, you right. you hit delete. That's what happened. Yeah. So first we need to create that sprite. We saw that error that I had right there. It's because invisible doesn't actually um, exist. So we've created invisible. Um, because invisible isn't going to actually be doing anything, um, we don't need to change the kind. We can just leave it as is. Mm -hmm. So um, now our message is appearing in the middle of the screen. Um, that's kind of annoying. So let's move it up to the top. Um, and to do that, we're just going to set the position of that sprite. So out. Let's take invisible. And we'll set the x to halfway through the screen, which is 80. Mm -hmm. And we'll give it a little bit of y too. So I'll move it up here. Okay. And the screen is 160 pixels wide and 120 tall. Yep, that's, so that's exactly helps, right. Uh, give some reason for the numbers we're choosing. Yeah. So now we've got a message up there, but it's always saying the same thing. Um, where would be a good place to change to put that message code? Well, we want to change it whenever we get to a new level, right? Right. So we have a good function for that. Yeah, so we've got this great function, next level, which we're going to use to um, encapsulate everything to do with the, the game. So, um, oh, <laughs> right, this is the wrong one. That's our collision handler. We want to put this here. Mm -hmm. I'll move this down there. So just like we're getting the current level out of the array, we want to get the current message out of the messages array. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to duplicate this block. And we will change this variable to current level. Oh, sorry, change this variable to messages. And it already is using the current level because you duplicated the block, right? Yep. All right, well, that's it. Um, we now have my game. We have this message that's showing up at the top. And every time we go up the level, it changes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's about it. Um, I, I hope you can see how this can be applied to other games. Um, for example, if you were creating a bunch of sprites, you could do that in the next level function also. And then um, when you're advancing to the next level, you might do something like delete all of them. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of a concept that's actually applicable to a lot of games, not just these narrative tile map based ones. Yeah. Another example would be the jumpy platformer one on the home page. Yep. When I wrote that one, I used the same basic structure to make so you can make your own levels. Yep. So that was all inspired by Joey. Um, and um, that's it. Thanks so much for joining us for this video. Um, as always, if you have any feedback, please uh, head over to our forum and let us know what we can do. All right. Thanks.